Hey guys, this is Kel from Caribbean Crypto Tips. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be totally crypto related, but instead I want to give you guys some good security best practices that you can have to secure your online accounts. By online accounts, I mean both your email account or your cryptocurrency exchange accounts. And in particular, I'm going to be using this particular device. I know it's not a flash drive. It's actually called a YubiKey and these little devices are 2FA devices. Now for those unfamiliar with the term 2FA, it stands for two-factor authentication. In other words, whenever you go to log into any of your accounts, you're usually required to enter a username and a password. Now, a username and password are two things that you happen to know. But when you enable 2FA on an account, you are also required to prove that you own something specific in order to access that account. Now this could either come in the form of an SMS, an email, Google Authenticator, or my favorite would be these hardware tokens called YubiKeys, which in my opinion offer the best level of two-factor security that you can want. Now the idea of two-factor authentication is really and truly not new. Many of you have been using it for many years before even knowing what it was called. Whenever you go to an ATM to withdraw funds from your bank account, you have to first present the physical bank card, which is something that you own, and then you have to enter your four-digit PIN, which is something that you know. So 2FA has been around for many years and it has mainly been used to secure your financial accounts. But now you can use it to secure your personal accounts as well as your crypto exchange accounts. Now over the years, there would have been many different kinds of 2FA methods that I would have tried out. Now what I intend to do is go through each of these methods in brief, simple detail so you understand what is involved in using these particular methods. First, we're going to start with the SMS text message. Now this is where you enter your phone number and you get a text to your phone for temporary one-time code that you will use to complete the authentication process. This is an example of it being used on a Google account. This is also used on an Amazon account as well, as well as Twitter. So many people are familiar with this one. However, many experts do say that this is not the most secure form of two-factor authentication. That is because the hackers nowadays have gotten quite sophisticated in their social engineering, but they're able to call the phone companies and sometimes persuade the customer service to, you know, swap the SIMs from you, the user, to their SIM. And in that way, they're able to intercept the codes as it comes to you. It also goes to them as well. That is called SIM swapping. And therefore, this method of authentication is not ideal. And I would recommend using some of, some of the other methods that I'm going to talk about now. But before I do that, this is what the text verification looks like. You're basically given a simple text message and you have to enter that six to seven digit code on the platform to be fully authenticated to log in. Now the next one on our list is going to be email verification. It is very similar to the SMS one. However, this time the one-time code is being sent to your email address. And this is usually the same email address that you would have signed up with on the platform. Now this form of authentication is still quite widely used. However, there's one caveat. If you are setting this up for an email account itself, then it would mean that you would have to have a secondary email. And I remember back in the day, this was, used to annoy me the most because I only had one email and they were asking me for a second email to use as my 2FA. So I had to create a second email just so that I can have the 2FA code being sent to it. And I had to put the two emails to basically receive each other's 2FA codes, which was rather inconvenient and annoying at the time. Since then, I would say the process has been streamlined and most people have more than one emails nowadays, so that shouldn't be an issue. But I definitely remember back then when I had my first email, this was quite annoying. So next on our list would be push notifications. This is where you have services like Apple and Google, which do make their own devices and they allow the device itself to act as a means of authentication in the form of a push notification. So in other words, when I go to log into my Google account, I get prompt on my device asking me um, what I'd like to log in. Is this you? You click yes, and then you're able to 
sign into the account itself. I find this one very convenient because the notification comes to your device which you tend to have on you in most cases and it's a quick and easy way to log in. Um, I'm not sure how secure it is but I, I found it quite useful. Now the next and most popular form of two-factor authentication would be the software tokens and these are basically the authenticator apps that you hear everyone talking about. You have the Google Authenticator, you have Authy, you have LastPass Authenticator, you have a whole host of services that basically do the same thing. These are standalone apps which have the sole purpose of displaying a random generated 2FA code every few seconds. Just wanting to remember these codes are time sensitive so please make sure your phone is set to the correct time otherwise the code that will be displayed will not be in sync with the platform you're trying to log in and you will get some form of error. So I'm going to explain for you in simple terms how this works. Basically, whatever website you're trying to enable this on will randomly generate a secret key which will generally be displayed in the form of a QR code. You then take your authenticator app that you would have downloaded from the Play Store or App Store, which could be the Google Authenticator, the LastPass, which I use. You're going to open the app and scan that QR code. By scanning the QR code, it's going to save inside the app itself a time-based code or token, which will change every 10 to 15 seconds. And when you go to log into the website now, you can be prompted to enter this time-based code and once you enter the code with any specified amount of time, you'll be able to log in. Now, I do believe this method is way more secure than the SMS verification and a little bit more secure than the email one, simply because these codes are generated on your device that is not tied to your email account. And as such, they're generated every 10 to 15 seconds. So there's no chance that you can reuse an old code to log in. So let me quickly go over the steps one more time. You go to your platform. You log in with your username and password. The platform is going to prompt you to enter the authenticator code. You open the app on your device. You look for the code that corresponds to the service that you're trying to log into. You paste that code in the platform. And now you have been successfully been able to log into the platform. Now I did run into a few issues with this method in the past. Just to let you guys know, remember I said that these codes are time sensitive and basically you, the time of your device must always be correct for these codes to work. And there was a time where I had set my device on my cell phone to automatic time zone and automatic time. And for some reason, my service provider decided to exhibit daylight savings, even though I'm not living in America and my time on my phone was changed to an hour ahead and hence whenever I tried to log in using this method my codes were always wrong. I had to go into my device, change my clock an hour back in, a, in order for these codes to work. So just bear that in mind when the time zone changes or when your clock changes these codes will not work. But I will say it has been years now since I had any issues with this method so hopefully that doesn't happen to any of you. Now moving on to the next method of authentication I'm sure everyone will be familiar with. This will be the biometric 2FA authentication. This form of authentication is not about something that you own nor something that you have. It's more about showing something that you are. Your fingerprints, your iris patterns and your DNA are all very personal genetic identifiers that are unique to every human being. These can all be used as a means of authentication that is very personal to you. However, it has been proven by many experts that this form of authentication is not really secure in that a skilled person can still take a fingerprint off of a surface that you would have touched or extract some DNA from any utensils or cups that you would have used and that person can fool the device into thinking that it is you that is trying to gain access. So this method, to me, would work in conjunction with other methods to enhance security, but I would not use this as a standalone means of logging into any particular account. Now finally, we move on to hardware tokens. These would be the YubiKeys that I would have mentioned earlier. 
These are physical security devices that you must either plug into or tap onto your device during the login process in order to complete authentication. I find this method of 2FA to be very convenient, quick and easy, and I think it's by far the most secure of all the methods that I would have shown. Now here on the right, you see a variety of YubiKeys. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some are small enough that you can actually leave plugged in to your device. And most of them can be fit on a keychain. They're quite durable, so you don't have to worry about them being damaged or destroyed. I can attest myself. I had one for about two years now, and it still works like a charm. So now I'm going to show you guys how to set this up on your email accounts as well as your exchange accounts but before we do that I'm just going to do a quick unboxing of my YubiKey 5CI Now here I have two YubiKey. The one on the left is my original YubiKey that works with USB Type A devices. It also has NFC capabilities, in other words it can work with my smartphone. I was using this particular one for quite some time with my old MacBook Air, but since I decided to upgrade with a new MacBook as well as an iPhone, I would have bought this new YubiKey, which is the YubiKey 5CI. It has both a lightning connector port for my iPhone as well as a USB Type-C port for my new MacBook. Now I'm going to head over to Chrome or the Brave browser to show you guys how to set this up on your email account as well as your Exchange account. So here I am logged into my Caribbean Crypto Tips Google account. I'm going to go over here to the top right hand corner and click Manage My Google Account. On this page I'll see many options but what you're looking for is security. Once you head over to this tab and you scroll down you realize that you can see that there's no two-factor authentication set up on this device and I'm going to change that now. So on this tab you will see the message protect your account with two-step verification, add an extra layer of security, keep out the bad guys. Even if someone gets your password it won't be enough to sign into your account. So let's get started. I'm going to have to log in once more. And now, use your phone as a second step to sign in. I can do that, or I'm going to check for more options. In this case, I'm going to set up a security key. Have your security key. Make sure you have your key with you, but not connected to your device. Next step, register your security key by inserting it into your device. And once it's inserted, I must remember to touch the capacitive buttons on the size of my YubiKey. Once that is done, it will pop up to allow, and then I can enter a name for my YubiKey to register it. I'm going to call this one my YubiKey number one. Once I click done, my key has been successfully registered as a 2FA device for this account. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and log out of this particular Google account and try to log back in to show you how it would work. So I'm going to sign back into my Google account now. Into my password. This time, however, I'm going to be prompted to insert my YubiKey. Once I do it, I touch the button at the side and now I have successfully been able to log into my account. And there you have it, that's how YubiKey works to log in as a two-factor authentication device. Now let me head over to my Exchange Binance and show you guys how to set up your YubiKey with your Exchange account. First I would need to log in and once I successfully done that, 
in my account, I would head over here to my profile icon, go down to security. And as you can see here from my own account, I already have one YubiKey attached to this account already, as well as my Google Authenticator app and my SMS authentication is also on. So most of my 2FA methods have already been set up, but in this case, I'm going to add a new YubiKey to this account. So here on my security management page, I'm going to click add new key. One thing that you must remember is that the YubiKeys only work for the Binance online platform, not the mobile platform. So I'm going to click continue. I insert my YubiKey, activate key, tap the capacitive button on the side, click allow, give it a name. next now because I have previous methods of verification on I must first confirm via email as well as my Google authenticator code so I'm gonna do that now now once all that is complete I click submit and my key has been added successfully I go to security management page and you can see my two UB keys are here now, for these UB keys, I have them set for being on. If someone tries to reset my Binance password, they would need my UB key. And if they want to withdraw from my account, they would need my UB key. But for this particular account, I do not have it set for login. In other words, I can log in with my regular authenticator apps or SMS. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to turn it on for login just so you guys can see how it works. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and log out of my Binance account and try to log back in. Once I go to click log in, now Binance has this little puzzle game that you must fill out. And now it's going to ask for my YubiKey. Once I've tapped the set of my YubiKey properly, it's going to log me into my Binance account. As you can see, I'm logged in here, so it works successfully. Now I'm here on the Yubico YubiKey website and I'm going to show you a list of different platforms that YubiKeys work with. Here you can see it works with all of your Google accounts, Coinbase, your various bank accounts, email accounts, Binance, LastPass, Facebook, Twitter. As you can see there are a whole host of platforms and websites that you can use your YubiKey with. Now, if you want to learn more about YubiKeys, there's a nice article by The Verge, which I'm going to leave in the links in my description, so you can read up more about YubiKeys, the FIDO Alliance, and all the other stuff that is related to online security. Now, I do hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. If you did, feel free to like, share, and comment below. If you want to stay up to date with videos like this, remember to subscribe and smash that bell notification to receive all of my channel updates. Now in the future, I'm going to be creating a personalized WhatsApp or Telegram group for you, my community and followers, where you can easily reach out to me and get your own personal crypto tips. Now this is going to be a special WhatsApp or Telegram group where you can actually send and receive crypto and even share crypto amongst members of the group. Now please stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to create this group as well as how you can be a part of my ever-growing community. Thank you for watching.